talking about that magazine, it is really the breaking point. This is what really got me into the sport of bodybuilding from the heart. Hi, old schooler. This is Samir Banud here. I'd like to welcome you to another session with my favorite company, Old School Lab. And they, they are making a good effort to bring in some of the unanswered questions. But uh, from my perspective, I would like to cover some of those topics. And that's going to be asked by Old School themselves. And I hope you'll enjoy this topic. And I sincerely, I'm here to help you to the best of my ability. Enjoy. Samir, you know how you said in a previous video of ours how bodybuilding for you started with seeing Arnold on the magazine in a yep. storefront in Lebanon and yep. then that inspired you to become the I'm next Mr. Olympia and did you ever tell Arnold about it and what was his reaction? It's so funny. I actually did tell Arnold. In my head it seemed like yesterday. So I was about to go see this movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and you know, and that, that was the hottest movie, Western movie. Right before getting the ticket to get to the movie, we have like a newsstand, newsstand with all the magazine, you know, hanging on the outside. And I saw this magazine cover, actually was Arnold. I told Arnold, I said, Arnold, you wouldn't believe it, but it's true. So I go inside and I flip through the magazine. Oh my God, I'm like, wow. And I said, you know what? I'm buying the magazine. <laughs> I told Arnold, I said, you know, Arnold, this is exactly what happened. He said, really? Oh my God, Zamir, that's so cool. I run into Arnold quite a bit. When I was doing my prep for 80, uh, in 1980, I was, Arnold was making a comeback. This is so funny. Um, I recall in 1980, Arnold decided to compete, but he didn't really make it as a news. He kept it quietly. But I'm looking at Arnold. Arnold was really changing. He was looking really good. And you know, there was a big controversy in 1980 about Arnold. And believe me, Arnold was in incredible condition, but he did injure his rotator. Arnold ended up taking, a, a, the doctor gave him a cortisone shot. And I think that actually hinder his usual quality. And he ended he end up late retaining a little water, but only God is perfect. But I was just so excited to be on stage with my main hero. Talking about that magazine, it is really the breaking point. This is what really got me into the sport of bodybuilding from the heart. Do you remember what pose or what picture of Arnold? Yeah, actually Arnold was uh, doing this photo like this. And there's two, one girl on each side. That was kind of cool, but when I looked inside too, when I see some photo of Arnold, not only is he a great bodybuilder, but he's got the personality. Seriously, he's not a boring kind of bodybuilder. Do you know what I mean? He's always happy. And really, this is what I want to tell some of the guys there. Being mellow, being happy, it contributes to better hormonal function. So snap out of it. Be happy. Let the good time roll. Just like Arnold, I'm telling you that too. Would you say bodybuilders today are more uptight and serious back then compared to back then? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, you know, you have some people who are like mellow. It depends on each individual personality. Like we say it in Lebanon, we say your fingers are not the same height. And then people are different. You know, Arnold was up going, Franco was up going. Like Frank Zane is a happy person, but Frank is not always going crazy. And I'm more like, I can compare my mental state similar to Arnold. Like you got Padilla, he's happy. He's always in a good mood. And that's why Danny was big too, and had a beautiful body. And I think being happy, it keep your cortisol level low. And I don't think that was done on purpose, but even by accident, when you're a happier person, you will have a better response. Did you guys ever listen to music while working out? I'll tell you what, I am a big music fan. I love music. And you know what, And I take music like spices of life. It's like, like salt, pepper, lemon. 
uh, soy sauce. It's different flavor, and it depends when you need to cook what you need. You, I enjoy you know. But prior to my training, I want to hear something that explosive. But it could be even sometimes Mozart. It don't matter. But I like the way, for example, Metallica. They have good lyrics. So I kind of really respect bands that put good lyrics, not just garbage. <laughs> In the gym, let's say, for example, uh, Joe Gold said it was a quiet space, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Joe Gold likes it more quiet. He does. He's really old school. When I came in, I was fortunate because Joe, he tell you, he show you his real face. He's not a pretend. Like he goes, listen, son, I saw you in, in Columbus and uh, you were great and you should have won. He should have won. You know, he said, you're more than welcome at my gym. You have a lifetime membership. And that's Joe Gold. I mean, Joe Gold is one of the real guru. I mean, Gold Gym is the most famous gym in the world. And then when he sold the gym, he made World Gym. So I think these two biggest hardcore gym in the world. What about Vince's gym? Vince? Have you ever been? Yeah, I mean, Vince Gironda was, wow. Vince Gironda was one of the real guru. I mean, Larry Scott, Arnold, a lot of people train at Vince's too. I respect people like Vince because he's for real. He's for real. And he, uh, he liked the art of bodybuilding. They did good for the sport, and I know Robert Kennedy, also rest in peace, who no longer with us. He says like uh, Vince's, and Vince's was also straightforward, similar to Joe Gold. If he doesn't like you, tell you get out. <laughs> I was fortunate that he had my photos and the front entrance of the gym that shot like this. And Vince says Samir's legs are the best legs in the world. I'm like, what? I thought he would think about my back is the best back, but that was good. If Vince Veranda saw that like this, I'm honored. Who are the bodybuilders that you credit almost for contributing all to your win? Who did you learn the most out of and what did you learn? Yeah, good question. And, and really, sometimes you see me on Instagram pointing these because I really like to teach people from my experience, from my mistakes. You know, I really did a good job following Arnold and Frank Zane. In fact, I'll tell you a good story. When Frank Zane lived in Santa Monica, Frank Zane kind of was nice to me as a kid, and I got my posing trunks from uh, posing trunk from Frank, and. It was really nice. Frank invited me to eat with him and Christine at the bicycle shop was on Wilshire Boulevard. And it was really good to me because I recall when I was in Lebanon, I was driving sometime to work with my father. And we had a butcher on the way to my father's work where there was a photo of Frank Zane doing that shop. And I am so, like, when I see this, when we get to that location, I looked like, wow, I want to see this photo. You know, and I've said to my father, I wish, then I said, I hope there would be a traffic so I could glance at the photo a little bit more. Frank Zane, he really uh, had a lot of influence in how I showed it. Even in Lebanon, I think uh, we have the vice president the IFBB back then, Mali Halaywan, in, in Mali, he, uh, he once compared me to Frank Zane. He did. And to me, it was like a great compliment. It's a huge compliment, you know, because I really do respect Frank because he does bodybuilding the right way. Arnold was my biggest hero, to be quite honest. Arnold is my biggest hero, and Frank Zane is right there with Arnold. And so, to copy these two greats, it was an honor, and it really, I think, uh, the end result was pretty satisfactory. As you could see, won the Olympia, and from two greats, you know, I did so much of Arnold, so much of Frank Zane, and, and I really do advise people out there to rewind and look back, because you can learn from the past.